Hello, welcome to Achaya Nidhan Academy. In this particular video, we are going to discuss the concept of Sapeksh Nidhan and Yogi Chagat Nidhan. So, what actually Sapeksh Nidhan and Yogi Chagat Nidhan? Actually, these are the coined terms. Coined terms in the sense, so the later authors or the later Ayurveda practitioners have identified the uh, different terminologies they are added to this particular aspect based on the uh, practices for all at that particular time period. So when you think about the Sapeksha Yavachyada Kanidana, that is, <clears throat> Before going into that particular topic, we need to know about some of the very important basics. Dosha dinam tasamata anumani na lakshaye aprasanni indriyam meksha purusham kushalo bishak. Dosha dinam tu asamata anumani na lakshaye aprasanni indriyam meksha purusham kushalo bishak. Kushalo Vishak Dosha Dinam Tu Asamata Purusham Aptasani Indriyam Viksha Aptasani Indriyam Purusham Viksha Anumani in a lecture. If you add this, so that is Kushalo Vishak Dosha Dinam Tu Asamata Aptasani Indriyam Purusham Viksha Anumani in a lecture. So skilled. Tunisian has to identify the abnormalities in the dosha or dushya by noting the aprasanna indriya, that means abnormal functioning of indriya, that is jnana indriya or karma indriya. For example, if a person is suffering from the disturbance in the, in the eye, so that is, for example, burning sensation in the eye, we are going to say there may be a possible pitta dominance in the eye. Redness in the eye may suggest pitta dominance in the eye. A pus discharge from the eyes indicates pitta as well as kapha dominance present in the eye. So like that. So we have to identify the uh, abnormalities in the dosha or dosha by seeing the abnormal functioning of the indriya. So that is this has to be inferred. For example, if a person is suffering from the uh, chest pain, specifically at uh, midnight, burning sensation indicates the dominance in the body itself. So that is how we are going to predict the uh, abnormalities in the body by inference. As far as Ayurveda is concerned, Regarding methods of diagnosis are considered to be three folds. Tasmat, Vikara, Prakriti, Adeshtana, Antara, Nicha, Samuthan, Visheshamsha, Bhutva, Karmam, Samachare. Tasmat, Vikara, Prakriti, Adeshtana, Antara, Nicha, Samuthan, Visheshamsha, Bhutva, Karmam, Samachare. Vikara, Prakriti, Adeshtana, and Samuthan. So these are the three ways we have to diagnose the disease. For example, Vikara Prakriti. What do you mean by Vikara Prakriti? So that means it is the nature of the disease as such. When you say about the person is suffering from Jwara, invariably the person may be having the dominance of Pitta Dosha in the body. If the person is suffering from Gulma, invariably there may be a possibility of the vitiation of abnormal Vata in the body. If the person is suffering from Prameha, there may be a possibility of invariable association of abnormal kapha dosha in the body. If the person is suffering from atisara, that means the person will be passing the liquid to semi-liquid stools that to increase the frequency. That is increased in number we are going to see. If the person is suffering from grahani, the person may be having the abnormal consistency of the fecal matter and the duration of illness will be longer. 
the person may be having the history of years together, which in turn results in the emaciation of the body. So that means grahani, we, we are going to say that the person will be having emaciation of the body, extreme emaciation of the body, and the person will be having abnormal fecal matter consistency. This is how the Vikara Prakriti will be helpful in making the diagnosis as such. Adhishtana and such. What do you mean by Adhishtana? Adhishtana means we have to identify the actual site of the disease or part of the body involved. Suppose if the person is having the Shira Shula, the part of the body involved will be Shiras. If the person is suffering from, what do you say that the Udara, the part of the body involved will be Antaradi, specifically Udara Pradesha or Kukshi Pradesha. If the person is suffering from Rudrasi, invariably the person may be having the obstruction of Adaha Shakha. So, if the person is suffering from the Chardi, etc., in terms, the Avayava involved in that particular situation will be Amashaya. If the person is suffering from the constipation, a Shakridgraha, Avayava involved will be Akvashaya. If the person is suffering from the pain in the knee joint, the Avayava involved will be the, what do you say that, knee joint itself. So like that, Adhishtana will be helpful to identify the actual sthana of the disease will be afflicted there. As far as Samuthana Vishesha, third category, Samuthana means the nature of the Nidana exposure. We have to identify what kind of the Nidana is responsible for the disease manifestation. Suppose if the person is having the excessive Vyayama and immediately in a matter of uh, few hours, the person is developing the presenting complaint that is indicative of due to the Vyayama itself. If the person is having the consumption of Dadhi, so that means curds, the person may be having the blockage of the nose. So here the Samutha or Nidana will be the Dadhi Sevana. If the person is having the burning sensation following the excess consumption of Gobi Manchurian, spicy Gobi Manchurian, the Samuthana will be Ushna Deekshna Ati Sevana. So like that, the diagnosis, the methods of diagnosis will be helpful in making the diagnosis as such. As far as Vikara Prakriti is concerned, we are going to say that the hypothetical diagnosis. As far as Adhishtana Antara refers to the anatomical diagnosis. As far as Samuthana Vishesha refers to the etiological diagnosis. So, like this, <clears throat> for these different terms, hypothetical diagnosis, anatomical diagnosis, and pathological or etiological diagnosis, refer the concept of the introduction to diagnosis. So, you are going to dedicate the description in the more elaborate manner there. As far as the Sapeksha Nidhana and Yochagat Nidhana, it is already being discussed. These are the two terms, which are coined terms, which are frequently used in the present days while making the clinical diagnosis. Sapeksha Nidhana, what actually Sapeksha Nidhana refers to? It actually refers to the listing of the disease which are having the similar clinical presentation. For example, a person is having chest pain. We are going to say that which are the conditions that are responsible for chest pain. Whether is it due to the cardiac disease, whether is it due to the respiratory disease, or whether is it due to elementary canal disease, or whether is it due to the neurological disease, or whether is it due to musculoskeletal disease, that is listing out the diseases as such. Whereas, so that means the ruling out the diseases one by one by analyzing each and every symptom and sign based on the case history, that is based on the interrogation and physical examination. So by doing the Pariksha or the Rogi Pariksha appropriately and narrowing the diagnosis to one particular disease, 
that is what EPR will say. We have a Chedakanita. In the previous session, we have discussed related to the chest pain. So here, in this particular situation, we are going to discuss the pain in the left iliac fossa. These are the, when a person is suffering from the pain in the left iliac fossa, so these are actually the nine quadrants of the abdomen. Among these, if the person is suffering from pain in this particular region, that is area number nine, these are the possible afflictions that may be possible in the individual. There may be possible left hip joint involvement, or there may be possibility of left ilium involvement, or there may be a possibility of sigmoid colon involvement, or there may be a possibility of descending colon involvement, or there may be a possibility of left ureter, left ovary, and left fallopian tube. When you think about these are the different organs, this is what we can say, the sapekshya nidana. And vivachyataka nidana, by looking into the presence or absence of other symptoms, we are going to uh, differentiate each of these. And suppose differentiate left hip joint. That means the hip joint is having the movement flexion, extension, adduction, adduction, then the medial rotation, lateral rotation, etc. If the person is able to do, then left hip joint involvement is ruled out. If the person is not able to do these different movements related to hip joint, then we are going to say that the probable diagnosis may be left hip joint involvement. Left ilium, so that is the upper part of the hip bone. So the person will be having that pain on that particular region itself. That is localized pain on the ilium region. As far as sigmoid colon, the person will be having the constipation history and the person will be having the pain which may be present even in the left lumbar region and left uh, iliac region and to some extent even in the hypogastric region also because of the excess accumulation of the fecal matter there. Part of descending colon in the sense the person may be having a pain in the left hypochondric region, left lumbar region, left iliac region. And left ureter, this actually the person will be having the urinary system dysfunction, where the person will be having the pain which may be radiating from left loin to left groin. And left ovary and left fallopian tube, these are usually having the Similar clinical presentation where the person will be having the pain in the uh, lower abdomen, specifically on the left side, wherein the lady will be having the clinical presentation related to reproductive system. On per vaginal examination, we can able to identify the uh, the tenderness in the near the cervix region on the left side. That is how we are going to differentiate pain in the left iliac fossa. In that particular sense, what an Ayurveda learner should do whenever if you are planning to learn this affection in the Vyavacheta Kanina, first of all, list out the different systems and its function uh, in the body. So that means human beings are having nearly 10 or 11 different systems which are functioning coherently. This digestive system, respiratory system, cardiovascular system, musculoskeletal system, urinary system, nervous system, hemopoietic system, endocrine system, hepatobiliary system, so like that immunological system, so like that multiple arm integumentary system. These are the systems they are functioning coherently. The next step you are going to do, so you are going to identify the what are the functions are going to take place in those different organ systems. If you are able to categorize in terms of the organs and their normal functions, well and good. 
after this particular exercise you are supposed to list out the different symptoms of these different systems for example person suffering from suffering from respiratory disease he may be having the running nose he may be having the nasal blockage he may be having the lack of perception of smell he may be having the uh, pain in the ears he may be having the post nasal drip he may be having the heaviness of the head he may be having the hoarseness of voice he may be having the uh, cough sputum hemoptysis chest pain breathlessness these are the different symptoms likewise you have to set you have to categorize you have to list out the symptoms of cardiac diseases elementary canal diseases musculoskeletal diseases nervous system diseases endocrine diseases skin diseases immune system diseases reproductive system diseases if you are able to list out it then it is very easy to identify which vital system may be affected in an individual and third set of the category we have to do that is we have to categorize these symptoms based on the anatomical diagnosis pathological diagnosis hypothetical diagnosis tentative diagnosis final diagnosis and diagnosis by exclusion method so here this is how what a learner should do as far as take home messages from today's discussion are sapekshya nidan yochana kinadana are nothing but the coined terms sapekshya nidan is nothing but listing out the symptoms or the listing out the diseases which are having similar clinical presentation whereas yavachana kinadana is the one which we are going to differentiate each of these listed diseases by noting the presence or absence of the associated clinical features that's all for today dear anm members what are the major key takeaways from this video mention in the comment box below and what is the one particular video that you would like to hear or see or visualize in the coming days mention in the comment box below and if you are liking this particular video then put a thumbs up and spread this particular video to the maximum number of two ayurveda learners so that we can make a huge movement out of this particular small message that's all for today something more in the next thank you